to Equal Entertainment, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Hollywood is mourning the loss of a legend, one of the first black action heroes in Hollywood, Richard Roundtree. Roundtree was best known for playing the cool and hip undercover cop John Shaft in the 1970s film Shaft. Roundtree's manager emphasized his groundbreaking impact on African-American leading men in film. Roundtree's prolific career spanned five decades with over 150 film and TV credits, including Roots, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and Desperate Housewives. His legacy includes a TV series, sequels, and a 2019 reboot of Shaft. Gabrielle Union said he was always the coolest man in the room with the best vibes. Samuel L. Jackson said, he was blessed to have an idol live up to who I expected him to be. And Hollywood Robinson Pete said this, my heart hurts to hear this beautiful legendary actor pioneer has passed. Richard Roundtree died after a battle with pancreatic cancer. He was 81 years old. Negotiations for a new three-year union contract between SAG-AFTRA and Hollywood Studios are picking up. The union presented its last counteroffer earlier this month. They want streaming services to add a 57 cent fee per subscriber. That money would be given directly to SAG-AFTRA members. Studio execs say the proposal would create an untenable economic burden. The Actors Union is also asking for higher wages and restrictions on the use of artificial intelligence. Sony is hoping to make gaming on the PlayStation easier for people with disabilities. Take a look at this. The company is now taking pre-orders for its access controller. It was created with the idea that no two people experience disability in exactly the same way. That's why it comes with pieces that are customizable. Players can tailor it to fit their individual needs. The access controller retails for $90 and is expected to start shipping in early December. A new thriller is out. The scary part, it portrays modern dating with a twist. It's called Cat Person, and it's directed by Booksmart co-writer Susanna Fogel, who helped to turn the iconic short story into a film. Cat Person, the film that you directed, is a horror film in a lot of ways. And would you talk about taking what was on the page and leaning into the inherent horror of it? Yeah, so Michelle Ashford, who wrote the script, um, you know, I can't take credit for having done the actual initial adaptation. I wasn't part of the project at that point. But when I came on, Michelle had really put it in that language. And talking to Kristen and reading interviews with Kristen, who is a big horror and thriller writer, yeah. um, who had written this as part of a compilation of horror and thriller stories, not a, not a compilation of dating stories. Um, mm -hmm. Kristen's like, yeah, it follows the structure of a horror movie. It starts here. It gets worse. It ends there. And so it was, it was ultimately made, made total sense that Michelle took it and exp and externalized all of that even more to sort of expand it into a genre film. Yeah. It, it, like it made sense structurally that that's like what the story was a jumping off point for. Um, but also I think that Michelle and I talked a lot and Kristen and I talked a lot and I talked to everyone else who was involved in making the movie a lot about just like how being a young woman is, it's a, it's a, multi-genre experience like you are always kind of aware that you're in danger even mm. if you are confident strong tough if you're walking alone at night in a dark alley and there's like a noise behind you you are aware that you are like you know vulnerable um in a way that i think that in a way that men don't necessarily fully understand and can't um and the flip side of it is that you know, I think for men, they're not always aware that they have that effect on women's psychology. Mm -hmm. and, and for Robert, you know, he's, he played by Nick, he's a six foot seven big guy. Yeah. And there's, but he still feels wounded, offended, hurt, rejected by her because he doesn't even like consider, consider the, um, the impact that his like sheer size and intimidation factor right. has like he doesn't he doesn't know that he like he doesn't feel like he's threatening anyone so the idea that someone would be threatened by his sheer just default size mm -hmm. wouldn't occur to him um and so he's offended and wounded but when an offended wounded and angry person is six foot seven it just hits really differently mm -hmm. <laughs> you know even yeah. if in his mind he's like i'm the victim she has all the power she's half his size so no she doesn't but it doesn't always feel that way to him you know mm -hmm. um so that was sort of an interesting thing about that. But but in terms of the thriller stuff, like I think that women are always, they always have just this layer of um, imagery from like their subconscious and also from like movies, TV, yeah. 
we've just seen this happen so many times mm -hmm. that we flash on that stuff when we're fearing things like we flash on a canon of like victimized women that we've seen pictures of we've seen videos of like they're fetishized in every serial killer movie and every you know it's yeah. there's so much imagery like ready in our brains right um, that it's just it's sort of like you want to make people watching the movie feel like they are also suddenly having these intrusive thoughts like mm -hmm. we have to have. So in that way, I wanted to like align people with Margot's experience of just like walking through the world and then like suddenly there's yeah. a clip reel of horrific things happening. So yeah. Yeah, yeah really well done. And um, well, since you touched on movies, I have movies figure into this film quite a bit as mm -hmm. they're both cinephiles and, uh, well, I don't know, cinephiles, fans of movies. Yeah. Um, but um I think it's so interesting that scene from The Empire Strikes Back is excruciating to watch in 2023. Uh, and also the song, uh, Marilyn Monroe, the Marilyn Monroe song about daddy. I mean, yeah. these things are so hard to watch. And these were the images that we were fed uh, throughout our lives and told this is romance. This is how it goes. And that in itself is a bit of a horror. Would you talk about the role of images and mediation in romance? Yeah, I mean, I think that like, it's, I think that there's a lot of competing, competing and confusing narratives around what we're supposed to want. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there, we're like raised on the same romantic stories that men are sometimes. Like yeah. men hear women talking about how they love The Notebook, a movie in which, you know, a movie that is like widely beloved among women, but it does involve a pretty assertive guy and a woman who's like, no, no, I don't want this. Okay. I want this, you know, and it, that doesn't, I'm not, I'm not saying that movie is problematic. I just mean, there's a, there's a canon of romance novels mm -hmm. where the guy is like in pursuit and the woman isn't sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that is something that women, it's not like women are saying, this is so terrible. We don't like this. There are a lot of women who do associate that with they want to be pursued. They want to feel beautiful. They want to be able to decide when and where and have the man just like steadfastly go for it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that is like, that is something we're brought up with and we're brought up kind of idealizing it or wanting to be desired that much. Um, and, and at the same time, it's like a hair's breadth away from stories about men pushing the boundaries or women mm. saying no and men pushing back and there's like a bad, there's like a shadow bad version of it. And then there's the version of it that makes for like m many a romantic story that we all mm -hmm. aspire to have. <laughs> it's really confusing. I, I mean, I, I find, I find it confusing as a woman. I think a lot of women were, would admit that they, you know, I think a lot of women, although they may really, they, they, they want to promote like women speaking up. I know there are a lot of women who don't necessarily want to like talk through an entire sexual encounter, like consent aside, they don't want to have a, they don't want to, they don't want to have that. They want a certain amount of like passion and instinctive mm. physicality to it. That doesn't involve, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? You know, <laughs> right. So that's, yeah. that's a tough thing to navigate because yeah. we're all saying, but that's required. You need to, you mm -hmm. need to procure consent for everything you do or else yeah. it's a problem. So I think there's just a lot of, um, I wouldn't even call it mixed signals. It's just people trying to figure out what's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, that goes for men and women. I know men are often really confused about what, what's allowed and what's, what's desired and what they're, what they're supposed to do and feeling like they're like going to walk into a trap of doing the wrong thing without realizing it. Um, I think creates a lot of like resentment and anger that's then really toxic and makes it scarier. Yeah. Which I guess is to say that it's all confusing, but the role of movies in this is really, and, and music and all of that is mm -hmm. movies and music in this, in this movie are like movies that take a point of view on that. And that point of view is, is, is all over the place, you know, mm -hmm. right? like they're talking about Mackenzie, you know, they're, they're talking about Mackenzie Phillips, right. Teenager. And like, that is a scene where an older man is like pressuring her. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a classic movie and everyone's going on movie night and she's selling tickets to it. And then, right. the, the, you know, the voiceovers in the lobby are like girls screaming as they're murdered by like evil monsters. And she's just selling tickets, hearing this. It's like, yeah. that is constantly there. And the Marilyn Monroe stuff too. It's like, we didn't, no one's questioning the fact that her stepdad is like 
loving this performance. No one's thinking this is really creepy and weird. This is uh, <laughs> the lyrics are weird. They're like, no, no, the yeah. sexiest woman alive performed this. This is an mm -hmm. honor to perform this. Of course, we of course we want the men to think we're like sexy and beautiful, and yeah. it's, it's all really confusing. So I wanted to like allow people to 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 acknowledge the confusing the confusing situation we're all in so that people mm. would talk about it more watching the movie like it's okay yeah. to be confused everyone's confused it can go really wrong to not communicate like go discuss it after you leave the movie you can watch the app get channel live by downloading our app in the apple or google play store you can also subscribe to our youtube channel for the advocate channel i'm tracy e gilchrist and thank you for watching